Hey everyone, it's Sam with West Virginia Overtime, and I want to apologize for being so late for with tonight's results of day one of the West Virginia State Basketball Tournament for the Girls. Um, with it being Wednesday, um, I wanted to make sure that um, I kept up with the girls' tournament. I also needed to get the single A um uh, preview done for day two which you guys should be able to pick up on your local uh, podcast network and since I run another podcast which is pro wrestling overtime it's called wrestling overtime I had to also do the results of AEW and NXT tonight feel free to subscribe to wrestling overtime and get all of the uh, down and dirty nitty gritty of pro wrestling Uh, I keep you up on that but that's why I'm a little bit late tonight now tomorrow's results hopefully will not be this this late and you'll be able to get them soon after the last game ends however day one man oh man it started off with a great one um i did not expect this pike view upset fairmont senior in the first game of the tournament uh to get double a started off um it they upset them 59 to 55 coach karen miller had her team ready for most things that fairmont senior threw at them and when she didn't she either called a timeout or it was the end of the quarter or or halftime and she made the change then coach karen miller as we talked about in our double a preview has uh coached for 24 years and has decided that this is her last season of coaching and we talked about how Pikeview has something to play for, how they don't want her going out in her coaching career with a loss, and you could tell it by the way they played uh, with their community support that they brought, who was very loud. Um, Lakin McKinney, who we talked about, let all players with 25 points and 18 rebounds while her other senior uh, Shiloh Bailey had 15 points and 12 boards but I have to tell you and I have to talk about her um, Fairmont seniors Marley was Wazenovitz, I'm sorry I butcher that her last name every time but um, I felt like Marley had a excellent showing. She actually showed just how good she was, uh, scoring 22 points and having 11 rebounds. She did her best to control everything and get Fairmont Senior to stay in the game and really tried to push them ahead. And Pikeview... Let me tell you, they just controlled the boards, and by controlling the boards, they controlled this game. And like I said, they pulled off the upset, and what a great start to this tournament. What a great start to double-A. However, our next game, the second game, was a triple-A game. And it was uh, Woodrow Wilson holding off Morgantown. Um Beckley beat Morgantown 44 to 37. Now, I told you guys in the preview of AAA that this was going to be a good game. Um, I'm telling you, while I picked Morgantown and I was totally wrong, looking back, I should have chose Woodrow Wilson. Um... They have, at since the end of the season, since the famous Greenbrier East game, they have shown total focus. This community and this team has came together to bond in a way that I haven't seen in a while. And 
I should have taken that into account because Beckley totally feeds off of each other's uh, emotions and confidence, but they also feed off their community. And this has just uh, really been a, a, a great girls basketball story of how they've came together. They held Morgantown under 30% shooting. Their defense was unbelievable. Their press strategy was to kind of deny the ball in, but once the Morgantown caught the ball, it was to cut off any other passes and make Morgantown either dribble into some kind of steal or trap, or they would try to pass the ball as in their normal press break, and Beckley was there for the steal. And so Morgantown just struggled. I mean, really, really struggled with uh, Beckley's press, them just getting steal after steal while they tried to pass through and get their press break going. Um, Liz Cato had 20 points, and then Morgantown's Caitlin Ammons, which I talked about in the AAA preview, uh, had 16 points and 11 rebounds for a good game. Then for the last game of the morning session, like I told you, Winfield just blew out West Side, 81 to 38. Um, I know some of you thought I was crazy, um, especially in the first quarter, because in the double A preview, I told you this was going to be a game um, that was going to be a blowout and that you could leave early and be okay with to get your lunch slash dinner and order it eat slowly and come back for the evening session and when you saw that first quarter first half i know a lot of you who listen to the podcast was like sam has no clue what she is talking about she obviously has not um seen west side and did not think this would be a game no no i have seen them and I was just shocked as you were with the first half. However, uh, Winfield made some changes um, in the second half, or excuse me, at halftime. And in the second half, ZZ Russell just, she, she was having a good game anyway, but she basically had the game of her life. She set a class AA state tournament record by scoring 41 points, but what also was impressive was not just the 41 points she had five rebounds she had five steals and she had four assists um west side's defense which we talked about kept them in the game in the first half but uh like i said kelsey spang uh winfield's coach adjusted at the half and it totally changed the tide Um, They went from a full court press to a half court trap and West side just didn't seem like they could make the adjustments and not sure whether they weren't sure of it or they hadn't practiced it or, or what Um, Winfield just controlled the game after that. We talked about the Hudson sisters, uh, Emily Hudson. She had 14 points and 15 rebounds and then her sister, Sister Lauren Hudson had 10 points and 11 rebounds for Winfield as they just rolled. Now, the start of the evening session, um, North Marion held off Bridgeport 58-59 in the tournament's first overtime game. Um, This was an exciting game pretty much from the get-go. Um, I'll be honest, I did not expect Bridgeport to play this well. I really, really didn't. Um, You have to give them big, big props. Um, Bridgeport was 
pressuring and flying around all over the place. However, I have to give credit to North Marin. They've been here. They've done it. They have seen everything happen before, and they just totally stayed focused. They stayed con um, concentrated, and at no time, I'm just going to be real honest with you, at no time did I truly feel like they were going to lose the game. Even when they went into overtime, seeing them walk out of their uh, time out, their get together, and start the overtime session, North Marion just has this confidence way about them. And they were led by their star player, Taylor. Butanamiki, I again, I know I butchered it. I am sorry, Taylor. She had 23 points. And like I said, this was a great start to the evening session. Um, however, we had a triple A game next. And I mean, I warned you about this one. Uh, Parkersburg just beat down Spring Mill 72 38. Um, honestly, I actually thought this one was going to be even worse than it was. Uh, Parkersburg played a lot of subs in this game and got them time on the state tournament floor, got um, their subs time basically with the crowd that was there and how the Coliseum looks. And I wonder if that will help them later in the tournament or even next year if they make it back because those kids got some playing time and they're not going to be nervous or scared going into the game in a state tournament from here on out. Um, Parkersburg was in control of this one from the get-go. Um, in basically the second half, the first half, it was semi-close, uh, just because Parkersburg struggled, um, they came out really cold, they were one for 13 from the three-point line, and they had 12 turnovers, but you could tell that their turnovers, I don't feel, were necessarily caused by Spring Mill. It was almost like Parkersburg was causing their own turnovers, and you could also tell their shots were just off. They, like I said, they came out cold. Um, I don't know if it was because the game before went into overtime or just that the state tournament is just a different animal or exactly what it was, but second half, their coach settled them down, and Parkersburg just like I said, came out and really put a beat down on Spring Mills and ran away with the game. Uh, Aaliyah Kreitz had 18 points and 11 rebounds in this game. Um, then our nightcap of the night, it turned out to be a pretty decent game. Um, Lincoln beat Nitro 63-55. Uh, everyone was kind of picking this one to be the game of, of double A and it turned out that it was a good game. I enjoyed Pikeview and Fairmont senior better. I just felt like, um, both teams were really going back and forth. Now in this Lincoln nitro game, Lincoln took advantage of their height differential. Um, they were really patient and got the ball inside. There wasn't a whole lot Nitro could do about that. Um, you know, you can't grow height in a timeout. But they tried a lot of different things um, as far as doubling down in the post. Uh, they tried fronting the post. They, they did try, Coach Pat Jones really tried different adjustments. But like I said, Lincoln basically just took um, advantage of their height. Uh, Victoria Sturm, which is Lincoln's leading player, ended up with 26 points. Now, so did 
Nitro's Bailey Goins. She had 26 points also, but she had to take 34 shots to get her 26 points. And so, you know, she was just kind of struggling with, like I said, Lincoln's height differential and what is going on with that. So that kind of wraps up day one's results um, here in a couple minutes on your local podcatcher. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, whatever you choose to listen to. Now my favorite is Pocket Casts. Uh, you will be hearing single A uh, kind of what the projections are for their games. Thursday is single A games. Um, again, you will have two triple A games, and I did all of those in the triple A podcast. We will have results for day two tomorrow night, and then we will have a preview tomorrow night also of day three, the semifinal games of all the games that will be taking place on Friday. So I look forward to talking to you guys soon. If you have any questions, comments, problems, or protests, or anything that you'd like to say, hit us up on WV Overtime on Twitter or Facebook, or you can write me at WV Overtime at gmail.com, and I will talk to you soon.